Active campaign automation examples. In this video, I'm going to show you some examples of active campaign automations. And a couple points I want to make. In general, use one or no goals per automation. And please keep it simple. Use multiple automations to accomplish one thing if necessary. Now, with all that said, I'm going to break my own rules. So let's dive right in. Okay. In this first automation here, this is what I call a drip automation. We're doing something over time. We're tripping it out over time. In this case, somebody had signed up for a product and they're gonna get, I don't know, a weekly, monthly email uh, delivered to them over time. And this is how it looks. Basically put them in. Um, I always like to throw a five minute wait in if it's not mission critical to send out an email. Then we start applying tags. Now this tag here says week one. So we just want to identify that they've been through week one by adding a tag there. And another tag I like to take advantage of one is what I call do not disturb. And the reason I created that tag is because when we send out a regular campaign, we want to exclude people that have the do not disturb tag. In other words, they're busy, leave them alone. And after that, there was a 12 hour wait, couple people, so you get the first email sent out, wait another 12 hours, and notice what we're doing. We're removing the do not disturb tag and then waiting two days before we do the next action, which is send an email. So what we're trying to do is inside this do not disturb window is don't send any other campaign emails that you might. So that's the purpose of this do not disturb adding and then removing waiting a couple days, put it back on, same thing, 12 hours, send the second email, wait 12 hours, remove the do not disturb, etc. Notice we keep doing that over and over, but then, ah, here's a goal. And in this automation, we're using multiple goals. So this automation says, do they have the customer tabs month one tag? Well, guess what? We actually apply it just prior. So of course they meet that goal and get pulled here. That might seem kind of silly. Why would you do that? If you just apply the tag, that will pull them down to here. They were going there anyways, the way it's set up. The reason is if somebody was to cancel their subscription to this, but then come back at a later date and start again, we don't want them to start at the beginning. We want them to start where they left off. So they get put back into this automation and if they already had this tag, they would get pulled down to here. There's multiple tags along the way, so they would get pulled down to the appropriate place and then start receiving the emails from that point. There it is, there's month one, part two, goal. Month two, or sorry, month two, month three should be coming up, etc. And then all the way down to the bottom. And I think we're just kind of putting some placeholders in here. This is like year four worth of emails. And then the very bottom, a lot of times I like to put a tag that's either they become a customer or they're no longer a customer. In general, it's become a customer. So if you're sending out emails to a person who's a prospect and then they become a customer, set a goal is if they have a customer tag, remove them. Or in this case, if they quit, we pull them out because they had a customer cancel tag applied. So that's one automation. Here's another set of automations. And this is where it, I think it's good to break up automations into smaller ones that you're gonna use collectively. Look at the naming. A lot of them have start with first date and then some kind of action. First date subscribe, first date open, first date click, first date unsubscribe, and then we've got last date click. And these are as boring as they get. Is they just do one thing and that's it. They basically update a custom field when a, a contact does an action. So if I look at first date subscribe, and if you look, if you just eyeball it here, these almost all look identical with the exception of this. This has that little purple web hook. So I'll get to that one in a minute, but let's take a look at the first date subscribe. So what this does is if anytime somebody subscribes to a list, we update a custom field called first date subscribe to the current time. And then I just put a wait there just to have an idea of how many people are going through there on a daily basis. And the one thing that's important here is it only runs once because I only want that date to occur just once. 
Same thing for click, same thing for open, and then unsubscribe's a little bit different. It's basically the first time they unsubscribe, except what's going on here is when somebody unsubscribes from a list the first time again, we update the first date unsubscribe to the current time, and then we do a webhook to a basically a custom script that we collect, and I'll show you what information we capture there. And again, a one day wait to get an idea if I want how many people are unsubscribing. And then the one other one I wanna show you is the last date click. So this is anytime someone clicks a link, and I'm gonna show you it's anytime, any link, any email, multiple times versus run once. So anytime somebody clicks a link, we put them here, we update their last date click field to current time, and then again, the one day wait, just to get an eyeball on how many people are going through this automation on a daily basis. Now, I'll tell you why I do that last one especially. This is a good one. If I if I know when the last time somebody clicked, I basically know when they were last active, the most active people. And if there's ever a time I kinda wanna rejuvenate my sending reputation, what I'll do is I'll pull in the people that have clicked most recently. So for instance, I might gather the last 5,000 people that have clicked, and to do that, I would go and look for anybody that has a last date click custom field date that's within a certain amount of days, one day, two days, three days, four days, versus somebody that's last clicked 30 days ago. So I know my most active people are the ones that clicked most recently. And if I wanna to send to them, to them the most engaged, that's how I can identify them. Okay, here's another set of automations, and these three are related to inactivity. This is email hygiene. And what this is here, this is the active automation. There's an inactive version of this. And in this case, the trigger is anytime they read an email or anytime they click a link in an email. Now, if I had a, if I could only use one of those, I would use clicks a link in an email because I trust that more than I trust contact reads any email because sometimes, um, email service providers will open the emails. Gmail's notorious for that. They'll trigger and open, so I don't really believe that. However, I know that if somebody clicks a link, they actually did it. But for this, we're simply looking for an open or a click. And then what we do is we basically clean up tags, and I haven't shown you these yet, but I will in a second. We basically remove tags that they may have collected as they were inactive. Should make sense, 30 days of inactivity, 60, 90 days, then we take them out of this automation, if they're in there, and they should be, the inactive, or if they're in the re-engagement automation, which occurs after the inactive, we wanna pull them out. So that's why we exit that, exit that, and then we put them right back into the TAS inactive automation. So that's how we restart this automation. We exit them, we put them back in, anytime they read or they click a link. So let me show you the next automation. So this is the inactive automation. One way they get in here is when they first subscribe. That's a one-time deal. So if I do this, it's just once. Otherwise, they get put back in by that other automation. And then we do a sanity check. I know it sounds silly, but what if for whatever reason they're not no longer on the list of interest? Shouldn't happen, but it's just a sanity check. If they're not on the list, we do to go to another action. We basically go to the bottom. And then we wait. So the first wait is a 10 day wait. And then right there we check, has this person, uh, is their first date subscribe? And that's why I collect that custom fields. I wanna know, when did they subscribe? Is it basically within 10 days? Oh, and do they have this tag? The reason um, they have this tag is because we test everybody through zero bounce. It's a service to validate email addresses. And we wanna make sure they have not opened any campaign. Let's think about that for a minute. Person subscribed within 10 days, their email's valid, but they haven't opened any email. What does that tell you? They signed up and they have done nothing. Zippo, zilch. Now, if that's the case, we put them down the yes path. We apply this tag and it's not really necessary. Wait for a day. Then we go to another action. Look what we do. We go all the way to the bottom, put them into this re-engagement automation. Haven't shown you that yet, but will. Otherwise, if they've been in here more than once, we send them down this path. So if they met this criteria, 
we're only giving them 10 days to be active. If they're not, we're gonna put them in the re-engagement and if they don't respond to that, they get pulled out. However, if somebody's been in here before and they didn't meet these conditions, they get another 10 day wait, another 10 day wait, that's 30 days. We apply a tag that says they've been inactive for 30 days. We do another 30 days in increments of 10. And remember, anytime they open or they click, they automatically get pulled out wherever they're at. And we just apply another tag, and if they make it down to here, congratulations, 90 days of inactivity, yay, not really. And then we put them into another automation. And this is what I mean by breaking up your automation. So I want to, I could have put the re-engagement here, but I didn't. I like to keep it a little bit separate so that I know where people are getting added and removed. So let's take a look at the re-engagement automation. It's nothing fancy. The way they get in here is from the inactive automation that we just exited. And it's basically a series of three emails. All we want is somebody to open the email. That's it, right? Because that's what triggers activity. They get pulled out of this and they get put in back into the inactive. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm spreading it out over three different times during the day. So if we have the contacts time zone, then wait till 8 p.m. in the evening. Send out this email. Wait for a day and then send it at noon in the contacts time zone. And then finally, wait for another day and send out the third email, but this time at 8 a.m. So we're, we're covering the whole day. We're giving them plenty of chances to open to read it. Obviously, not everyone does that. And then finally, just wait a few days. And again, I just want to, I break it up so I get an idea of how many people each day are likely to be unsubscribed. And then we unsubscribe them from a list and we add this status tag. Not that this ever gets used, but it's a way to identify everybody that's been unsubscribed. So the combination of those three automations are used for list hygiene. And let me show you one very, very interesting piece of data. Do you remember how we track the unsubscribe date? Well, here's where it gets used. So we send a webhook to this website and it'll catch the information. It tracks when they subscribed and when they unsubscribed. So, so far there's been about 20,000 unsubscribes and of those 3,400 do so in the first nine days. So in other words, about 15, 16, 17% of anybody that's going to unsubscribe does it within the first nine days. That's kind of important. So, you know, you've got to get them engaged as soon as possible. Now, if you look, notice this, there's this 9% of people that have ever subscribed happen to incur basically on the 10th day. Remember what that is. We put them into the re-engagement automation almost immediately if they haven't opened within the first 10 days of the first time subscribing. That basically says 9.4% of the people that sign up don't even open an email after they've signed up. And then if I look at this a little bit closer within, and I broke it up based on you know, the number of people that have been here for nine days, you know, the majority happen on the first day you got a lower percent on the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, are all in the double digits, and then it drops off. And then as a percent of overall, 9% occur here, and you've got bigger numbers early on, and then it drops off. But notice what happens down here at 99. So this is when people get put into the re-engagement automation for the first time. So in other words, they may have opened an email, and did something so they didn't go through the 10 day version. They made it to 90 days. We re-engage or try to, but they didn't do anything. So adding these up, there's like 25, 27% of people will engage once and then no other time. So important to get people engaged early on. And this is the kind of data that tells us that about 10% of the people don't even do anything about 27% of the people will engage at least once early and that's it. Okay, 
stop with this depressing news and let's go move on to something else. Obviously this is an active campaign, but we're using a uh, Interact, I think it's Try Interact, uh, it's quiz software. It connects to active campaign via API, so it's based on results, we can send over information. In this case, we can send over tag information based on their answer. In this case, I think there's like three different levels that people can be, and we tag them appropriately based on the answers they provide. I'm not gonna go through it, but I will show you the automations. So three automations correspond to three tags that people can get when they go through that quiz. And if you look, there's this, this, and this, and you can kind of get an idea how many people are in each. So majority of people end up going into this automation based on their quiz results. And again, using your eyeballs here, these automations are all kind of the same. The messaging is definitely different based on the results. So if I go ahead and dive into one of these, so based on the tag that gets applied and there's only it only happens once, they get put into here and notice what happens down here. We remove the other tags. That's under the assumption that they've been applied. Because sometimes people come back, they change their answers and they get put into a different group. We just wanna clean up those tags. So if somebody started here, but ends up in here, we wanna make sure this gets removed so the other automation would do that. And then we use our good old do not disturb because we put them in here, they're busy, please don't disturb them exit two other automations and guess what? They're the other two that are associated with this just to make sure they're not getting uh, emails on top of each other. And then send out email results and we could have, could have made content conditional in the email based on the tag that was applied. However, it gets a little convoluted so we simply broke it up into three different automations and each email is custom to their level. And then down here, there's a, um, a conditional check, an if-then check. Are they basically, are they a customer or have they ever visited this page? If they have, we go over here, wait a couple days, send this email. Otherwise, we go over here, send this email. And then in this case, we wanna do another check. Did they just open that email in the last day or not? If they didn't, we wanna resend. So we wanna give them a chance, we really want them to open that up and then basically wait them for a day, put them over here, wait them for two more days and then send them back over to here. But these different paths are conditional on actions that resulted in tags or some kind of history that tells what they did. And again, another check down here, did they in this case attend or register for a webinar? If not, I think there's probably a reminder followed by another check, which is, did they even open that email, otherwise resend? So there's actually kind of a lot of repetition. You know, if I shrink this down, you might get a better view of it. But everybody eventually ends up on this far right-hand side. When I say far right-hand side, I mean far left-hand side. And are we back to 100% yet? And then one of the last things we do is we put them into this automation here. So they're in this automation, we fire off this other automation, and then we sit here and wait for up to three days for them to exit that. And if I remember right, this is a purchase automation. So if they purchase, they automatically get pulled out, which would end them here, which means we can remove this tag and end this automation. So those are some examples of active campaign automations.